Thank you, uh, uh, Yang Chang and uh, uh, Sophie, Peter, and Mark in the absence. And uh, it's my great honor to have such an opportunity to focus on an issue that I've been exploring for some time and still uh, in the process of trying to give, give it some kind of substance. The, uh, the idea I would like to share with uh, friends and colleagues, uh, of course I welcome you all to this symposium, is uh, a very simple, hopefully not a single-minded idea. And to me it's uh, highly complex. And what I've done so far is simply some indications <coughs> and what shape that uh, this eventually would be able to take. Um, I want to address the question of Confucian humanism and humanism in particular, and which is an uh, outmoded and uh, very widely used term that, that can give uh, all kinds of uh, Mis, uh, misunderstanding. Uh, normally, we consider humanism as contrasted with spiritualism on the one hand and naturalism on the other. <clears throat> and by identifying this particular humanism as a spiritual humanism, I want to argue that it is necessarily naturalistic and it is also spiritual. So how you try to combine these three seemingly, if not conflictual, cer certainly different terms uh, into a coherent uh, vision is uh, something that has been tried again and again, and I think with uh, varying degrees of uh, success, and yet uh, the, the suspicion that somehow the uh, various links that we considered absolutely necessary are not necessarily self-evident. So th this idea, uh, I think it's how to develop a notion of human self-understanding that is humanistic, but at the same time, it's uh, not only compatible with nature, but uh, it requires a transcendent dimension. Of course, on the surface, uh, this is ambitious, and it's uh, certainly very difficult to achieve. We know uh, for sure that uh, Confucian humanism has been characterized as uh, learning, learning for the sake uh, of the self, and uh, self-consciousness in particular is the point of departure for this type of learning. Um, it is uh, a ceaseless process of growth and development undertaken by a person understood as a center of relationships rather than as an isolated individual. This humanism therefore emphasized the self, learning for the sake of the self, but as a central relationships. The self enters into communication with uh, an extens ex uh, expanding network of others. It is always to be understood in a particular historical and cultural context, and yet uh, there is uh, a great deal of emphasis on the singularity of the self, or the uniqueness of the self. And uh, one of the main concerns of vision learning is not only uh, learning for the sake of the self, but also learning to establish one's own singleness, singleness or singu singularity. But assuming that the self enters into communication with an expanding network of others, <coughs> and therefore there is always a historical <coughs> and the cultural context. 
But uh, I will want to stress in my approach to this notion about humanism the irreducibility of the center. And uh, many scholars have argued that uh, it's easy to talk about Confucianism as role ethics, as uh, social relationships. But uh, I would like to underscore in the, in the very beginning that no matter how we try to understand relationality and uh, the Confucian idea of the self cannot be easily subsumed under the umbrella of uh, rationality, uh, of uh, relationality, no matter how broadly we try to conceive relationality. Um, the idea of recognizing the other is, uh, however, a precondition for human self-understanding. The, the African uh, the proverb that I am because you are in the idea of the Ubuntu, the notion that uh, my self-understanding is predicated on my being recognized by you, is quite uh, compatible with this notion of recognizing the other as an integral part of the self. Mm -hmm. Self-knowledge or self-understanding is dependent upon the participation of others without whom the self cannot be actually become self-aware. Community, in this sense, is rich and diverse, uh, from the family, neighborhood, to uh, small societies, to the nation, and to the global community, to human nature, and and even beyond. And this uh, is predicated on the refusal to accept the unreconcilable duality between the self and community. Uh, therefore, the idea of the one and the many. The idea of one and the many uh, dichotomy is uh, heuristic, but uh, the possibility of integration is taken for granted. Uh, certainly, the dichotomy is not exclusive. Any given one, in this sense, especially in terms of human self-understanding, will have to be able to embrace uh, many others in order to enrich the resources of the inner self. At the same time, we have uh, to find a core that is not reducible to any external conditions, uniqueness of being human. This inner identity, which is unique, together with an openness to the much larger universe, constitutes the continuous relationship between self and community. <coughs> As a form of spiritual humanism, the Confucian tradition takes uh, the concrete and living human, human person here and now as its point of departure. And uh, with the full recognition that the person is rooted in, in the earth, and even though there's always a transcendent dimension, the rootedness in the earth is not negotiable. <clears throat> therefore, the person is understood as part of nature, and therefore, that to be human is uh, to be naturalistic. We don't have to learn from the Taoist. The Taoist has a great insight in, in <clears throat> understanding this particular dimension of being human. This involves a deep appreciation of the inner truth or the inner self, the inner resources of the natural world. The concrete person in this world is not to be contrasted with, uh, with heaven and regarding the heaven as the other, but in fact embodies the idea of heaven in terms of its own subjectivity. Nature 
uh, on this on this account is not reducible to any humanistic definition although that how broad is the conceit it is uh, because it's imbued with something which is uh, not only a part of nature but uh, transcends the, the natural world this presupposes that the relationship with the other as a continuous unfolding of the self embraces not only the human community but the nature and beyond. The transcendent dimension then becomes an important part of human self-understanding. Many people have criticized my own position as uh, maybe too, too uh, Christian or there's an attempt to uh, Christianize Confucians. And I don't think I've done that but I certainly acknowledge fully my indebtedness to Christian theologians and theologians in the monotheistic tradition, trying to understand the human, not in terms of the natural world, but in terms of the transcendent dimension. In this sense, the, the hard task, the difficult uh, problem, is how to link all four dimensions of human experience together in a coherent, comprehensive, humanistic vision. The question of the self, uh, since uh, a person has a relationship, the question of community, uh, nature, heaven, how to integrate self, community, nature, and heaven, these four dimensions becomes the intellectual and spiritual task of Confucian self-understanding. So ideally, well, maybe this is my last point, we uh, simply want to see the integration of the person as the self in terms of the body-mind, the body-mind dichotomy is rejected and the body actually is the home of the spirit and in fact the self either understood as the physical body consciousness or the soul and the spirit ought to be integrated and this uh, integration of all these dimensions allowing the self to develop a fruitful interaction with uh, a variety of community. And th this includes, as we all know, from our own family, neighborhood, all the way to the world at large. And the fruitful interaction between self and community is also predicated on the possibility of a continuous presence of nature as an integral part of human self-understanding and therefore human beings uh, some people say well it's better to talk about human becomings this human beings are always in the process of becoming and that com becoming process is both the broadening and deepening and in this sense uh, Zhang Zai's notion of uh, forming one body with heaven and earth and mirror things, which carry on by Lu Xiangshan and Wyoming and others, is uh, at the core of this understanding of the human in terms of its relationship to nature. So how can nature be an integral part of human well-being, rather than regarding nature as uh, a collection of objects nature, as uh, Tom Barry has noted, should be understood as a communion of subjects. And it is not uh, the other. It is not a collection. It is, in fact, interconnected with every dimension of human self-understanding. And therefore, the uh, uh, continuous presence of nature 
as an integral part of the self-consciousness of the person becomes a uh, third dimension in addition to self-community uh, 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 in terms of nature. And one particularly difficult uh, problem for the confusion is uh, this insistence that nature is more than simply what is out there. Uh, there's uh, a meaning often <coughs> constructed, created by human joint effort. But there's something deeper in nature that we observe. And in fact, creativity, if you say creativity as such, is uh, heaven. Heaven creates humans complete. The ability to maintain a harmonious, sustainable relationship with nature is uh, humans' process of self-understanding or self-completion. And that self-understanding, uh, self-completion, is uh, what uh, Chen Hao talked about as a tendi, as a heavenly principle, in the sense that which inherent in our nature that makes our human human is also the same spiritual and intellectual force that make nature nature, and that also is what uh, humans uh, ought, to, ought to learn to become in terms of an ever-expanding network of relationships. Therefore, these four dimensions is uh, predicated on the possible mutuality, continuous mutuality, or mutual influence, mutual interaction between heaven and the human. And we can see this is very compatible with many monotheistic uh, theistic relationships or religious ideas, but uh, it has its own particular uh, approach. The, uh, the approach is comprehensive and uh, integrated. Thank you.